Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Friday, the 1st of July, 2022. Today, the Church in Wales celebrates the feast day of Aivogui. Aivogui is the third saint to whom Llandaff Cathedral is dedicated, but little is known of him. It would seem that he was a nephew of Tylo and a monk of Llantwit Major. On the death of Tylo, Aivogui was elected Bishop of Llandaff by the abbots of the South Wales Monasteries and consecrated in 569. As we remember him, we remember Llandaff the diocese and the cathedral, the cathedral particularly at this time of interregnum for them. And we also remember those who are preparing to be ordained tomorrow. And so we come to our evening prayer. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night, to you be praise and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And so the office hymn, Christ is the King. Christ is the King, O friends, rejoice, brothers and sisters with one voice. Let all tell all the world, he is your choice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord, and praise, and sums of joy, and holy praise. For Christ's brave saints of ancient days. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. They with the faith forever new followed the King and round him drew thousands of faithful hearts and true. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O Christian women, Christian men, all the world over seek again the way disciples followed then. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ through all ages is the same, place the same hope in his great name, with the same faith his word proclaim. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let love's unconquerable might, your scattered companies unite, in service to the world of light. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So shall God's will on earth be done, new lamps be lit, new tasks begun, and the whole world at last be won. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our first psalm is Psalm 38. Rebuke me not, O Lord, in your anger, neither chasten me in your heavy displeasure. For your arrows have stuck fast in me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no peace in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head, their weight is a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and brought very low. I go about mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my flesh. 
I'm feeble and utterly crushed. I roar aloud because of the disquiet of my heart. O oh Lord, you know all my desires, but my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me. The light of my eyes has gone from me. My friends and companions stunned apart from my affliction. My neighbours stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me, and those who would harm me whisper evil and mutter slander all the day long. But I am like one who is deaf and hears not, like one that is dumb but does not open his mouth. I have become like one who does not hear and from whose mouth comes no retort. For in you, Lord, have I put my trust. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, let them not triumph over me, those who exalt over me when my foot slips. Truly, I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is ever before me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without any cause are mighty, and those who hate me wrongfully are many in number. Those who repay evil for good are against me, because the good is what I seek. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God, make haste to save me. O God of my salvation, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And a uh, reading from the, prof from the book sorry, of Ezra. Now the prophets, Haggai and Zechariah and Abido, prophesied to the Jews who were in Jerusalem and Judah in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, son of Josadak, set out to rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, and with them were the prophets helping them. At the same time, Tatanai, the governor of the province beyond the river, and Shethar, Bozanai, and their associates came with them and spoke to them thus, Who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure? They also asked them thus, What are the names of the men who are building this building? But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, and they did not stop them until a report reached Darius, and, and then an answer was returned by letter in reply to it. The copy of the letter that Tatanai, the governor of the province beyond the river, and Shethar, Bozanai, and his associates, and the envoys who were in the province beyond the river, sent to King Darius. They sent him a report in which was written as followed. To Darius the king, all peace. May it be known to the king that we went to the province of Judah, to the house of the great God. It is being built of hewn stone, and timber is laid in its walls. This work is being done diligently and prospers in their hands. Then we spoke to those elders and asked them, who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure. We also asked them their names for your information, so that we might write down the names of the men at their head. This was their reply to us. We are servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the house that was built many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and finished. But because our ancestors had angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried away the people to Babylon. However, King Cyrus of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, made a decree that this house of God should be rebuilt. Moreover, the gold and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem and had brought into the temple of Babylon, these King Cyrus took out of the temple of Babylon, and they were delivered to a man named Sheshbaza, whom he had made governor. He said to him, These are the vessels. Go and put them in the temple in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be rebuilt on its site. Then this Sheshbaza, Baza came and laid the foundation of the house of God in Jerusalem, and from that time until now it has been under construction and is not yet finished. And now, if it seems good to the king, have a search made in the royal archives there in Babylon to see whether a decree was issued by King Cyrus for the rebuilding of this house in Jerusalem. Let the king send us his pleasure in this matter. Here ends the first reading and a song of the justified. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons us righteous, those who believe, 
who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to sins for our, to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance and endurance produces hope and our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore, we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. And a reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleaded with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets and have demolished your altars. I alone am left and they are seeking my life. But what is the divine reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to, knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened, as it is written, God gave them a sluggish spirit, eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear down to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and, re and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and keep their backs forever bent. So I ask, have they stumbled so as to fall? By no means, but through their stumbling salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. For if their stumbling means riches for the world, and if their defeat means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Here ends the second reading. So we come to our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O God of my salvation, be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Be, forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have scattered the proud in their conceit and lifted up the lowly. And so we come to our prayers of intercession. Praying today in the Anglican Cycle of Prayer for the Diocese of Malik in South Sudan, for Bishop John Joe Abraham Mayom. We pray for this diocese, for St. Paul's Kriger Don, for Sam Erlinson, their parish priest, and for the church wardens, Philip Evans and Sally Allen. We continue to pray for 
our ordination candidates who are currently on retreat at St. Spinos in Trimerion. We pray for them as they prepare for that ordination tomorrow morning, praying especially for Alison Goldstein, Grace Lomas, Dan Morgan, Marcus Pipe, Gareth Williams, who are to be ordained to the diaconate, of course, and also for Bishop John Lomas, who is the retreat director and ordination preacher. We continue to pray for peace throughout the world, in Ukraine and in Eastern Europe, and we pray for talks at this time concerning that conflict. We continue to pray for the world around us, for all those who bring, seek peace and justice in the world. We pray for members of parliament, for the Queen and for the armed forces too. We pray for those who are in particular need of our prayers, for Louise, Gordon, Joshua, Roy, Barbara, Derek, Hannah and Chris. And we also pray for the faithful departed, among them David Pipe, Bob Gray and Les Griffiths. And our form of intercession. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us make our prayer in the power of the Spirit, looking to Jesus, the pioneer of our faith. That with the noble fellowship of the prophets we may discern the signs of your kingdom in our midst. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with the glorious company of the apostles we may proclaim your gospel throughout the world. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with the white-robed army of martyrs we may be ready to suffer for the truth's sake. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with all who are anointed by your Spirit, we may bring good news to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with the saints in light, we may bind up the brokenhearted and comfort all who mourn. Let us pray, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that within the whole company of Christ's pilgrim people, we may come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In communion with Aithogui and with all the saints, we commend the world to the mercy and the protection of God. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me once again this evening. And um, apologies for mispronouncing exult as exult twice during the, uh, um, during the uh, proceedings. My apologies. Try to get it better next time. Thank you.